Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to this DevOps from scratch series. In this video, we're going to talk about some fundamentals of the internet itself. We're going to cover how the internet works on a high level. We are not going to go really deep into each and every component of it. We'll be giving a high level overview of how the internet works. Starting with what is a website and uh, how does a simple website work and then we're going to move on to uh, what is a network and what exactly is the internet itself and then you know we're going to talk about dns and some other stuff like now what is a server what are the kind of different kind of servers out there so these are the things that would be very useful to understand uh, the concepts better as we go deeper into each of these topics let's start with a website what is a website it's nothing but a collection of documents so simply speaking let's go ahead and create our simple website as simple as possible i'm going to open this with visual studio code you can obviously use any text editor and i'm going to create a new file index.html there we go that's our simple website there so if we open it up in firefox we can see hello world so this is our website if you notice this website is living on my computer's hard drive so that means nobody outside of this computer can access it but we need to be able to let other people access our websites too right that's where the concept of networks come into picture so what is a network a network is nothing but a bunch of computers connected together that's it as simple as that for example we have Wi-Fi in our home that is a Wi-Fi network we have the Wi-Fi router here this is emitting wireless radio signals that actually connects our devices together uh, let's say we have our uh, PC here and uh, our phone here both of them are connected to this Wi-Fi network that means they are actually part of the same network so now this is a network let's say if we have a website running in our pc here with the correct configuration we should be able to access the same same website from our phone too so we can call this as a network let's say this is my my home my home network and let's say you also have the same network at your home and uh, this is your home network now if i have a website in my pc over here and if you want to access this we need some kind of connection between these two and that's where the internet comes in internet is nothing but a network of large number of networks it's not owned by a single entity it's just a bunch of computers connected together to form a network and then these networks are connected together to form the internet so how does it look on a higher level so as i said before i have my home network here and you have your home network here uh, let's say this these are in two different countries let's say for example i am in let's say for example i'm in india and uh, this is somewhere in uh, the us we have our internet service provider isp that is giving us the internet And you also have your own ISP that's giving the internet. So these ISPs are actually connected together. Let's say our ISP have a multiple networks like this. And this group of networks is called an autonomous system or AS. And your ISP also have a similar system. That is also called an autonomous system or AS. Now, these networks are connected together. How are they connected together? Well, if we are talking about the case of a connection between India and the US, that's a lot of distance and uh, we need to have some sort of physical connection from India to the US. This connection from my ISP's network to your ISP's network is possible using this backbone network so it's called the internet backbone so 
this is the internet backbone there are physical optical fiber cables laid from each and every corner of the world connecting other parts of the world these are actual physical cables that is laid underwater so if we go into this website called submarine cable map we can actually see the cables uh, in better detail and that is what's enabling us to be able to connect from services and devices in another country from our country now that we know that there is actually a physical connection between these isps uh, how does it work in terms of a website let's say for example google.com let's say for the sake of simplicity google has a single data center in the us this is the google data center and let's say there is a computer in here that has all the files that are needed for google.com and this whole data center is also connected to this when you're accessing google.com your connection goes from your wi-fi router through your optical fiber cable to the isp and from the isp it goes through a lot of different routes and finally reaches google's data center and it fetches that google.com's uh, html pages and uh, you know it returns through the same path or well, not necessarily same path but it returns through some path all the way back to you with that file so that is how it works so this is a simple representation of the internet uh, remember internet is not a network of computers but it is a network of networks all right so we talked about internet and uh, how the internet works so now let's talk about servers in all its essence it's just another computer just like your desktop pc or your laptop seriously this is nothing but another computer well obviously it's gonna have different characteristics like uh, it could be a it it might be a lot more powerful it will be connected to a backup a power backup it will have a lot more storage it will have a lot better internet connection etc but in theory it's just another computer so different types of servers what are the different types of servers first of all we have web servers these are the servers that actually serve the websites like google.com or facebook.com etc then we have email servers these are the computers that provide email services then we have dns servers which provides the dns service uh, let's say for the sake of simplicity these are the main types of servers out there to start with we will be dealing with web servers because we're going to deal with websites back to our network we need to talk about a few more things ip addresses and port numbers we have a network here and uh, it has a bunch of devices connected together we need some way to identify each of these devices uniquely that's where we use ip addresses let's say our wi-fi wi router has 192.168.1.1 and uh, our desktop pc has 192.168.1.2 and our phone has 192.3 now these are all called private ip addresses in your home network also your devices could have the same ip address because these are called private ip addresses for a reason they are private it has no value outside of that network it has no importance outside of that network and let's say this one is five now if you have a service running in here and you try to access that let's say you have a website running in this pc and that has the ip address of 192.168.1.2 if you open up your web browser in your phone and go to 192.168.1.2 you should be able to see the website similarly we have our google.com here and we have our google's data center here and we have our google's web server here since google.com needs to be accessed from the outside world we cannot just give it a private ip these servers do have a private IP, but that's a different discussion altogether. But for now, let's just say these servers have a public IP address. So let's see what the IP address of Google.com is. All right, 172.217.6346. Now this is the 
Google dot coms web servers IP address. If I go to my web browser and type in this IP address, see I'm going to one seventy two two one seven one sixty three and forty six, and bam, Google redirected that to Google dot com. It actually redirected to the Google dot com website itself. That is because Google have configured their web server to look for any request coming to this IP address and redirect it to the www.google.com domain name itself we can actually see what happens here what happens if we do a curl request i'm going to talk about curl in a, an upcoming uh, video but for now just see what i'm doing here so if you see here you can see that it says moved permanently and the location here is http www.google.com this is because, as I said before, Google has configured this web server to redirect any request coming there to www.google.com. On the topic of IP addresses, another important concept that we should know is port numbers. So what is a port number? According to Wikipedia, it's a, it's a communication endpoint at the software level within an operating system. It's a logical construct that identifies a specific process or a type of network service. Just don't worry about it. Port numbers are logical. It has no meaning outside of the operating system. For example, it's not like a port, it's not like a USB port or your headphone port or anything like that. It's a logical thing. We use port numbers to be able to distinguish different services. There are 0 to 65,535 ports available. To better understand this, let me give you an example. These are the common ports. I'll explain what exactly this port look like in a computer in a second. But let me just start by say, uh, let me just start by explaining some of these common ports. Port number 80 is used by HTTP. Port number 443 is used by HTTPS. Port number 22 is used by SSH. Now we will talk about all of these things in detail as we go. But what exactly are these things? These are called protocols. What is a protocol? A protocol is nothing but a set of rules used by devices or computers to talk to each other. It's more like a, a language, you can say. You know, you have a set of rules in a language. To be able to speak English, for example, you have to use these kind of words. If you want to make a sentence, you have to follow this structure. If you don't follow the protocol, the person who is listening to you will not understand what you are talking about. So protocol is there to make sure that each of these devices are talking or communicating to each other in the same language. So back to our protocol, HTTP or port number 80. Let's talk about the protocol HTTP and the port number 80. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Basically, it's a protocol used to transmit text files or text from one computer to another. That includes all, all of our websites, the, all these HTML files basically. So HTTP is the most widely used protocol out there you know when you open a website it's using http when you are loading a, an image or a video whatever like most of the time we are using http so now there is a secure version of http called https so remember http is actually a plain text protocol what does it mean it means whatever we transmit over the network in HTTP protocol, it goes through the network in plain text. So that means anybody who is listening on that network will be able to exactly see what you are doing. I said I'll explain what a port number look like or what exactly it means. Let me explain. Here I have my computer and I have a service running in here. Don't worry about these commands. I will explain all of these commands in future videos. These are not relevant at this moment. So if I type in this command here, you can see that in local address and this is the port number, port number 80, 
there is a service called nginx running so what does it mean well it means nginx is a web server and it means on port number 80 it's listening for any request so what happens if you open that port number 80 let's see what happens now since this is my local computer this is on my computer itself colon the port number if i go here there you can see this is the nginx web server running and because the port number 80 is the default port it's uh, google chrome is gonna just you know mask it we can do the same using our curl command that we used previously again i will talk about the curl command soon for now let's focus on port numbers here as you can see the html is served so now here the service is still running on port number 80 so if i stop the service and if i run the command again there's nothing there the service is not listening on port number 80 anymore and now if i try to open it it's not gonna work because there is nothing nothing working there see as you can see google chrome says localhost refused to connect refused to connect means there is nothing over there that's what a port number means now we can change this port i can change this port and change it to uh, something that is not 80 let's say we can change it to 81 and uh, i'm going to restart so if we check now now it's listening on port number 81 so now if i try to open that localhost colon 81 you can see the website loads here on port number 81 a port number is nothing but an entry point or a window inside the operating system where a service can listen for connections from the outside world now let me just show you a real world example of how it looks like on a real server so this is on a real server uh, that's sitting on the internet and here you can see how many ports are listening here see here we have port number 80 we have port number 443 and there's like a lot of other a bunch of other ports for uh, 8080 port number 5340 ns and uh, a lot more stuff running here so these are all different different services listening on different ports meaning listening on different windows so that we can have a same server run multiple services all right there is one more thing that we need to discuss in this video that is dns so for example in here as you can see google.com has this ip address called 172.217.163.46 but nobody's going to be able to remember that right we know google.com by the name google.com so how can we actually remember these ip addresses we cannot that's why we have something called dns dns is a way to map domain names into ip addresses like for example www.172.46 uh, or whatever you get the point uh, or facebook.com to whatever ip address it has we're going to talk about dns in detail how exactly the dns system work uh, and the different types of dns querying in another video for now this is it dns means to be able to resolve a domain name into an ip address remember each and every computer out there needs to have an ip address if you want to be able to reach a computer on the internet it should have an ip address it should have a public ip address domain names is nothing but a way to point to these ip addresses so that's it for this video in the next one we're gonna talk about how to uh, have our own server how to install a linux uh, machine and have our own server set it up and host a website and things like that for now this is it in this video thank you guys for watching